Yeah. Populations have been flow. Yeah. Okay. We have started. So this call is being recorded and will be uploaded <clears throat> sometime after the call to YouTube, publicly available. If you haven't added yourself to the meeting minutes or if you have any agenda items, please add them in. Chat, there's the meeting notes. <clears throat> So it looks like we don't have, uh, Nikolai's not here, and one of the items at least was on this, but we could try to go through as many of these as possible. Didn't see the Gloucester on here, um, but there are some notes about the quick start and install guide. I linked to at least one of the docs. I don't know if these are for creating new ones. Um, Ed, or Fred, uh, oh, there's Nikolai. Uh, greetings. Does anyone know um, what we're looking at here for the quick start guide? Um, yeah. yeah, I think we I know Sounds we, like we're trying to get ready for the release. Yeah, I so think I that's going cool. that <clears throat> And we have this quick start guide, and I think it's actually quite dated at this point. Um, you know, I, I know we have docs on the Helm chart stuff, but I don't think we have the Helm chart stuff in this doc. Um, so yeah, I think we probably do want to update this. It's also sort of Vagrant centric, and we actually have support now for most of the public clouds. Uh, so it works in GKE and um, AWS, well, actually GKE, Azure, and AWS shortly. We're, we think we figured out the last bug there. Yeah, um, what I mean? They are already here in the guides. It's just that they are not linked in the quick start guide, if that's the Yep, problem. yep, and I think that's actually true for all of it, Leo, you know, is that we probably just sort of use the quick start guide as a, as a standard landing place. Um, and it, we probably want to be something where people are going to try kicking the tires on NSM rather than um, the, hey, build the code. Do you think there is a good way to directly embed? Because in the past, when I updated the quick start guide, because it was even more <laughs> dated. Uh, so when I updated it, then I had to do the similar exercise with the site. Do you think there is a way to directly embed whatever is the latest here in the master on the site? Or I don't know. You see what I mean? I am absolutely certain that something clever could be figured out. I don't happen to know what the clever thing is off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah. I actually think it would it also may be good to separate out between like how do you start up a cluster kind or vagrant or so on uh versus how do you actually install the the system and my hope would be instead of using the uh the make uh, machinery for people to get started and who are not intending to develop that we migrate over to the to using the helm charts so that way that it's uh, a lot easier for for people to to use okay Ed, related to your where people are going to land and getting started, I think most folks are going to come to the front page of the repo, and they'll come down here and be looking for something like this getting started. This um, getting started section links over to the this quick start guide, mm -hmm. which could be have the helm information and potentially links to all of the other um, guides that are yeah. how do you how do you set up AWS Azure GKE and those could be um, links from the main guide and then the rest is run helm to get this going on your own Kubernetes so if you don't have that then you can do these other things uh, Get I mean, I'm thinking through all of this stuff at this point. 
And I bet you that I could make this work with Netlify with a trick something like the following. Right now, Netlify has a sub-module for the theme. I bet I could probably get to get it to work with a sub-module for the docs directory. Um, and when the checkout gets done, the you know Netlify builds up the docs, and then when you then you, you when you update the documentation in the network service mesh repo, you wouldn't have to copy all the documentation over. You would just have to push a push a patch to the site that updated the submodule uh, commit. Oh, okay. I think something like that could be made to work. Um, does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. So I think we could probably make that work. And now that I think about it, it actually solves a different problem I have at a different place. So this is a super good thing. Yeah, I do think it needs a bit of love leading to the release because we do need to get some good documentation for the release. Oh. Do you want to add this as an action item to update? Um, for supporting the submodules auto checkout. Yeah, let, let's hum a few bars and try and capture an issue so somebody can go poke at that. Because uh, it, it, it's, I don't know that I will be the one who gets a chance to do it, but if we can sort of capture okay. an issue for it, and I, if you want to sign me the issue to go uh, to, to go capture the issue, that's fine. Okay, that sounds good. But but by no means, you know, if you get inspired, Nikolai, don't don't hold back. Does that capture what we're talking about, Ed? Hang on. For the submodules? Yes. Uh, I, would, I would, for doc, get, uh, check auto update of docs, get submodule. Otherwise, I'll look at that and go, uh, but we have submodules for themes. They work fine. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I do have the memory of a goldfish sometimes. And then um, the main, for the main quick start guide, uh, migrating to use Helm charts. Uh, yeah, I mean, which, which may to a certain extent just involve putting the links to the right things. Probably one of the things we want to try and do as part of the release is is have people go through and test the documentation, meaning go through and try following it. Um, because that ends up being a huge deal. My, my experience writing docs myself is I've never had documentation that I wrote actually work the first time I tried to follow it, ever. Um, and once it's been around a little while, then it, documentation tends to get stale. This is why having a uh, dedicated docs team is going to be so important. Yeah, yeah, and 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 people with different levels of experience testing the docs is also super helpful. Um, because I know one of the things that I all often run into is I skip steps, <laughs> and that's not helpful when writing docs for the general public.
Um, do you all mind if I just throw these down to the action items so it's immediately visible, or does it make more sense to have it in line like this? Um, I'm fine either way. I'll organize it however you all want. What is the paper's post glossary? I don't know who added this. Uh, this was from Jeff uh, and um, mainly his thought was, okay, now that we have the glossary in GitHub and kind of uh, um, set uh, already, uh, what are the next things that we want to look at? And uh, of course, the first thing is, the, I mean, are the uh, all the all the documents that should go along with the um, uh, release? So whatever we have discussed already, but there probably are other things that can be taught. Um, but I don't think that <laughs> that there is a time to to discuss this now. I mean, like we have enough things for the release to figure out. So. I mean, uh, for example, we have things like uh, blocks that we were supposed to have, which are disabled on the site, and um, lots of other stuff there. So for the uh, SDK last week, we actually merged something. So I'm not sure if people, I mean, I, it probably can, uh, I can pass a couple of uh, edits. Uh, uh, but uh, as I said, maybe someone following it uh, would make more sense uh, because I essentially wrote the code and the doc <laughs> to it. So uh, maybe I made too much assumptions as usual people do. So defer on the glossary for right now, um, is at least related to the upcoming release. Yeah, I mean, so uh, the uh, the other thing that actually here here was the the deck. So this is um, at least Jeff considers it being part of the you know, say natural continuation of the glossary effort. I like to have. Um, representative slide deck which is should be linked here something that can be shown and uh, we all agree that this is the standard um, i'll say standard uh, slide deck <laughs> for nsm which makes sense i think Do you want me to pull anything up regarding the SDK to review? Sorry, it was muted. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's a long uh, developer-ish oriented uh, readme, so I don't know, maybe we can just quickly open it, but essentially it needs uh, someone to really deep dive a little bit there. So it's, uh, uh, yes, on the, no, it's on, it's in the SDK folder. Mm, should be, yeah. So, did, yeah, it's, it's shown. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there are some TBDs here um, about the socket and um, things. I think mostly the socket, where the socket is located. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
it's uh, so what's you know. needed on this maybe a review from someone that's um yeah trying to set it up or use it or what, what do we need here yeah i mean I, quite honestly like one of the things that might be nice here is to try and use the sdk documentation try to test it by writing a very simple nsc for the cnf test bed fit stuff does that make sense hey don't call me out I wasn't calling you up. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, or it, what about the simple client in general um, for doing that? R rather than the entire piece, um, I, I, w I like what you're saying, and I want to put it in, but I wouldn't want any blockers by saying it's not all set up. Yeah. But, no. So, I mean, basically... We, there's got to be a, a, a client and an endpoint uh, for this, to, to form a connection. So mm -hmm. we have a, a client and an endpoint. Um, and eventually when you set up your actual pipelines, it'll just be the same code. It's just both a client and an endpoint, right? It waits for someone to connect and then it connects out to the next one of the pipeline. Okay. So, but I mean, I, in, in, I keep meaning to go do that myself, quite frankly, and I just keep not getting to it. So anybody else who wants to go try that, please do <laughs> um, and use the SDK instructions to do so because the, the SDK stuff is looking really nice. Um, and, then, and then assign issues to me. <laughs> hopefully just for the documentation. Um, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Um, Probably there's, um, so besides going through and maybe picking one of these and just minimal items like typos yeah, going uh, through for any of the docs that we're saying are going to be definitely released or we're saying here's where we want to point people. So if we're saying the SDKs and stuff like that and uh, catch that. Yeah, I just didn't manage to find any useful uh, syntax uh, checker for VS Code. So if someone has any recommendations, I guess this will improve my docs writing. Ed, are, are you were you suggesting using like the chained endpoint, or is it single? Is there or manually connecting one? Simple endpoint. I'm using these terms. Creating yeah, simple I, endpoints and then manually creating the chains by one after another. Yeah, the way I would do it if I were doing it is I would create a simple endpoint that is also that is also capable of being a client. Um, I wouldn't chain the connections quite the way that, that we've done it in the past. Uh, that was good for the, the firewall. I'd literally have it so that um, every, you write the one endpoint that can accept incoming connections and route them and that can make outgoing connections um, and handle whatever IPAM thing you're doing, right? And so when the new input comes up, it, it goes and asks for whatever network service it was configured to ask for as a connection. And it also advertises that network service. Um, and then you can control the chaining with the network service um, CRD. Does that make sense? So all, 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 yeah. your, all your endpoint then has to know is, um, it, it, it is advertising service foo, it is requesting service foo. And so it comes up, it requests service foo, and it advertises service foo. And, you know, the, the whole, how do we chain them together? That's all done by network service mesh and the network service mesh policy to compose them. Are there, so the, the sample code here, is is there um, full uh, sample code that can be run that are examples, that are working examples, ideally with test? 
<laughs> that are in the code base? Because nothing I, on the test continues working. Um. <laughs> yes, I mean, uh, this is what we have under examples. I mean, in our examples folder and then in our integration uh, testing, we use the same code for for in our CI. Um, so if you go under examples and then CNSC, and uh, CMD of course, and then it's NSC, and it's, yeah, that's why I call it the client. <laughs> uh, and then this is the very simple, yeah, it just doesn't have the termination code because uh, it doesn't need it. So this guy uses the NSM client list API, which is a little bit more advanced and it's uh, used in the, with the admission controller. Uh, but the same can be, can be run on its own. You don't need uh, someone to inject it for you. Yep. No, they're, they're, they're not super hard to write. Um, the SDK makes it super, super simple. Uh, the only question I would have is around the um, IPAM. I mean, you have a question about IPAM or, or? Oh, no, not not how your IPAM module works, <laughs> but there, there's some existing IPAM they have for their pipelining and CNN. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, we'd have to make sure that we do that. And I, I need to go take a look and see how how varied the comp is for your IPAM uh, module and see if that matches up to what they're doing. My guess is probably pretty closely, um, you know, and so it, it could be as simple as Lego blocks. Sounds good. Um, I, I'd like to maybe schedule a call to talk about that and potentially have a, an, an even simpler test case that builds on something like these examples and then make sure that that's fully understood before implementing it with the whole setup. Okay. Um, mainly, I don't want to get, I don't want to have to worry about the Cluster configuration setup tied into it. So then we can say, here's it, it's already existing, and then all we're doing is building these endpoints and making sure they work and understand. Then we can kind of go backwards and say, mm -hmm. here's that plugs in, and we need to change how the pipelines work. To, to, okay. There's a lot of behavior that was there that was manually set up because we didn't have services. And we yeah. can rip a lot of that out after seeing how it work um, with no, the, so these the examples. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We, we should be able to get it as simple as just a Helm chart, right? So you guys start with yeah. whatever the Kubernetes you want, uh, and then you apply a Helm chart, and away you go. Yep. Okay, so from the SDK standpoint, um, it seems like we could end up with potentially expanding on the examples as far as in the repo based on what we're talking about here. And then that will lead into use cases on the CNF testbed, which is somewhat separate, but um, they'll help each other. Yeah. Is there anything else from the SDK? Um, I think we're saying proofread, suggestion imp improvements, that'll be there. And then also testing uh, the examples. Anything yep. else on the SDK? Okay, how about yeah. release notes? Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's okay. That's, uh, I won't say that's fine. Yeah, I think um, the SDK stuff, we should make sure that we circle back on this stuff after somebody's gone over it. I, I think we'll build this out a lot more once that's done. Cool. Release notes. Um, 
Are you wanting to put these in the change log? Yeah, the problem that I have with the change log of an initial release is that essentially you should diff against zero, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, I don't know what what actually we should put in the change log. I mean, we change from from nothing to to something. I think I think we just make this a special case and just say initial, initial release. Yeah. Under features. I do like how we're, we're referencing specs here. That's actually really quite nice. Does someone want to take on um, drafting this? Do, do we want to tick it or just add it in here as a, what do we want to do on that? And does someone want to take a stab at a draft for the release notes and start adding features, the links to the specs and that sort of thing? Yeah, I'm happy to build this out. Yeah, I think I can have a go at the first one and then uh, anything that I miss, then uh, either Nikolai or, or Ed, I definitely appreciate help after that, but let me get the first version out. Thanks. Good. For some reason, it keeps deleting the entire line as soon as I remove too much text. There we go. Okay. What is in a sim right up for the site? I'm talking about here. And there's a, Nikolai, you have some alternative messaging. Yeah, I, I, I think the, the general consensus from last week was um, the, the current messaging has served its purpose and needs to be replaced. Okay. Which, as the person who wrote a lot of it, <laughs> <be fine. laughs> So the, the messaging, yes, was this uh, this one, in the first slide here. Uh, I mean, probably needs some editing. I like that it's up to date enough that it has SCTP because that was not a thing when we started this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's from their official documentation. I was also curious to see what kind of services, uh, what type of protocols do they support for the services. And I was like, okay, SCTP. Interesting. Yeah, that was a, <laughs> that was a random ask from, I forget which company it was, but yeah. Well, it, it was actually more than a random ask. They actually showed up with code. Uh -huh. they, they absolutely did it right. It was, I was in the, the, the SIG networking meeting where they showed up with the code and and it was super hysterical 
because the, the, the guys on SIG networking were like, we have no idea what SCTP is. <laughs> uh, yeah. Doing well, has the feel of making sense. And so sure, why not? <laughs> wow. It was, it was really hysterical. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody actually just sort of approve a feature they have no comprehension of quite the same way um, in a way that was as responsible as it was done there. Like they, they did the due diligence, but it was just like, yeah, so, okay, sure, whatever it is. Um, it was I, I, I think that was the first time they had ever heard of SCTP was that pull request, so. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it keeps getting used oh. for fewer and fewer things. Um, I was kind of surprised that it, it survived the leap to 5G with so much stuff moving to HTTP2, so. Maybe, who knows, maybe in 6G it'll go away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, okay, so everything is going to be HTTP2 or HTTP3, when I think that the HTTP3 is... I am super thing. excited about HTTP3. It's cool. <laughs> so for so anything to do on this um, particular one, right now we're just saying there's a write-up and potentially replacing that as well as um, will this affect, um, I guess the other question would be, will this affect anything on the main readme for the site? So the what is NSM needs a complete overhaul in, um, in the <laughs> site. Like that was, that predates the, um, the narrative. Like that, that's how old this thing is. So yeah. it, it's got to be months old at this point, for God's sake. I mean, it's totally antiquated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before we invented stories. <laughs> Okay, what are the action items for the, what is NSM for the site? I mean, besides updating the content and once it's there to get the content, is, yeah, I think is there something on this section that we're wanting to use probably, or does it need to be written? I think what, what Jeff was getting at, and I highly approve of this, but I'm not quite sure what it looks like because I'm much better with pictures than words. Uh, at least written words, um, is that right now what you, what you want is to lead front and center with something that grabs people that they feel is going to be important to them. Um, and that, that, that they can wrap their heads around. So, you know, so, in some sense, we just got too much going on in our landing page right now. Well, why don't we boil it down to, instead of having the what is NSM, like we could keep some of the verbiage that's there, but perhaps we start with, with three pictures. One of them is like, what is NSM? And it could be Sarah asking for a network service as a, as a user. And then the second the image could be the operator chain creating the, defining what Sarah's VPN is, like oh, it has to go to this firewall you know, with the thinking emoji. And the uh, third one could be the CNF uh, vendor who's like, I want to build this firewall thing out in a way that the operator and the user can easily consume it. And I, these three things combined is what NSM is. Hi, it's, 
it's more than that, but it, like, I think it would give people a good start. Yeah, no, no, I, I like that as a start. It, it, we may want to tie some of that to the, the zero day one, day two. Clearly we want pictures and not text the way we have here. Um, but I also like anthropomorphizing it by, by having people with roles, right? Because the three roles you just described and this shows up in the day zero, day one, day two is Kubernetes admin, network service admin, and um, developer, right? Yeah, because there's because to each of these three groups, their experience is widely different. Like, Sarah's not in the business of creating CNFs, and she's in the business of building out her her billion dollar app. And so she doesn't care about how the firewall works as long as it does its job or how it gets things together. And the same with the experience of the operator, you know, or the experience of the CNF vendor himself. So, so I think if we like we 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 have these at at the very minimum three competing narratives, and that's before you even take into consideration um, vendors who are going to be creating their their ENSMs. Oh yeah, that's absolutely true. And I mean, one of the things I've I've learned talking to enterprise folks is, um, it, you know, the infosec folks at enterprises they actually care a lot about two things. The first thing is securing it, but the second thing is being invisible about it. Um, because they, they've come to realize they can't hold back the tide. And so they can't make everyone come and supplicate to them on the way to getting the, their work done. It doesn't work. They've got to stay out of the way unless something's really broken. But they've got to have enough visibility and whatnot to be able to figure that out. So I think our site needs to reflect this. It's a pity we can't do some form of segmentation in the front end, like developer <laughs> on the developer site. Hey man, if you could look into the souls of people who came to your website and figure out the nature of creature they are definitively, we, we should be off making way more money in marketing. <laughs> so for the, uh, so we have three personas. Um, does someone want to take a stab at Hang creating? On. Mm -hmm. it's an interesting thought just occurred to me. If we've got three personas, picture a landing site page where you have little, little images for each of the three personas with their name under them. And they drop you through to a very simple statement of the way it works to them. Right. So you, you've got, you know, Sarah, the software dev, and you follow through and you see what it looks like to her. You've got, um, you know, Carl, the Kubernetes admin, you know, and you've got Nancy, the, the network ser service admin, and you just get little emoji pictures for each of them and you, drop on through um, and you see the version of their, st of their story, uh, that might be very, very, very effective. And we might even consider if we're doing that, you know, the fourth persona, which is the, the vendor who wants to, you know, someone who wants to build network services. You know, it's, it's sort of the network service endpoint author, which won't always be vendors. I mean, there will be a bunch of open source things as well. Does someone want to take a stab at the drawing or diagrams for um, r related to each of the personas? And then um, someone can work on creating the text version describing what this. It sounds like the having a visual representation might be a good way to start. We are kind of a very visual community, as it turns out. If we have um, something that can communicate it visually, then it can probably, after that, be easier to describe in a written form. Well, let me ask, ask a question. I don't mean to put you too much in the spot here, Watson, but you're super talented at this. If somebody could give you a, uh, some pictures in the script, 
Um, would maybe a video to go along with the personas also be interesting? Is that something that's within the realm of possibility? That was a plus one on the uh, Zoom chat if okay. folks didn't see it there. <laughs> awesome. So let, let's, let's take a note yeah. that if somebody can help put together a script, um, Watson is all about doing videos. Um, okay. I, I, so I don't who wants to put together the Watson script? Video, but, but yeah. <clears throat> who, who will put together a script? So I'll put it this way. I'm super interested in all of these things. I just am not clear to me what I will be able to commit to doing at this particular moment. So if anybody else wants to grab that, please do. I think Watson just volunteered to try and do scripts as well, which I think is awesome. Okay, um, and it sounds like we're going to skip the glossary today. Um, we'll defer going over that and blogs as well. Is there anything else? No, I, I think we've got a we we sort of outlined a pretty good program here. Um, I'm feeling fairly good about it. We don't have anyone that's, uh, I guess, jumped on this for adding the links from the main readme and, and the different guides. Is, do we, is there a ticket created or does someone want to take on the task for doing those, updating the docs and connecting all the different uh, guides together from the main uh, quick start guide? Yeah, I think that's probably also an action item, but we need to figure out. We're running a little bit low on attendance this week. I think that may be why we've got dangling action items, but capturing them is still super valuable. Ed, would you take on creating a, a ticket, a public issue for um, updating the docs and connecting them all from links, and then sure. uh, someone can maybe jump on that? Would you be willing to pick that up, Nikolai? I think you were looking at doing that anyway. Is that reasonable? Uh, we are actually entering quite of a holiday season. Ah, uh, okay, no, 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 never mind. If you're entering holiday season, please, I'll take it. So, and just create. I'm just talking about creating the ticket for updating the that describes. Here's all the ones that we want updated. These right here. Okay, got it. What's important for the release, essentially? which is the moving to Helm charts and, and then referencing all the public clouds as well as kind. Great. I think we got everything. Cool.
Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks, Great. Bye. Take Cheers. care. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Bye. Cheers.